we've seen more evidence of community transmission in um, both our neighbors in the United States as well as in, in British Columbia. And so I think for the public, I think this is the time that they really do need to prepare um, for uh, potential uh, disruptions in their lives um, because it may be a, a matter of uh, days or weeks that we will start to see um, people ill with COVID-19 here. This morning, I've declared a state of emergency in the province of Ontario. All town-owned facilities are now closed and as many staff as possible are working from home. So we're starting to notice that through GAP, Grave Nurse Against Poverty, and some of our other uh, services within town are really expressing concern about how this is exponentially increasing. And so I'm working with uh, the district uh, right now uh, to look and see what we can do, as well as from the town perspective, what can we do financially to assist those people as they get through this really tough time. People are using other masks, homemade cloth masks, <coughs> They should be aware that they're not of proven value. If there is any value in them, it's more from the point of view of um, avoiding infecting others. If you wear one of these masks, there's the potential for droplets from you and from coughing and sneezing from you affecting other people. Keeping in mind that if you're coughing and sneezing, you really need to be self-isolating at home. It protects you and it protects me, and that's why I'm wearing it. Life's too short got to do what you got to do and if the government says we got to do it we're going to do it. Muskoka has been very good since this whole thing started you know so why get careless now? It, honestly it was uh, a tug of my heartstrings as we went through there uh, to see them holding thank you signs to us uh, I thought was quite incredible. Staff and residents at Fairburn were given a salute from the community today in recognition of National Superhero Day with police and community residents driving by, wailing sirens, honking horns, and waving to the staff at the long-term care home from their cars. Residents of the care home were also brought up to the windows to get a first-hand look at the show. This is one of many community-led programs thanking first responders and healthcare workers for their tireless efforts during the COVID-19 pandemic. But as we see the numbers uh, come down and uh, by May the 24th, uh, hopefully the numbers uh, are going to continue coming down. We're going to have a heart to heart conversation this week with the mayors. Uh, there's only so long uh, you can you hold back uh, taxpayers from going to their their uh, their cottages. We are due for a, a second wave this fall of COVID-19. And that's because there are many people who are asymptomatic uh, with COVID-19, meaning there are people that um, are infected with the virus that don't know they are infected. After consulting with the health experts, it is clear that we cannot open schools at this time. I know the past months have been tough on our communities, on parents, on educators, and most especially on Ontario students. Don't expect to see anything like this scene this summer anywhere in Muskoka, as COVID-19 still keeps public events on a tight leash. Major Bracebridge events like the Father's Day car show just won't cut it this year, as government restrictions are currently keeping social gatherings to five people or less. Physical distancing is likely to be sticking around for the rest of the summer. What I'm hearing is that Prior to reopening restaurants, whether it be on a 50% capacity, 25, we don't know that information yet. Uh, what I'm hearing is one out of every 10 will not reopen again. And we're hearing it now slowly but surely coming out. And you know, the biggest shocker to me is once we get through the summer and into the fall, uh, what I'm hearing is that another two out of 10 will go down. Is there is a, a move to reopen um, some more, uh, you know, restaurants, barbershops, things like that? Uh, very much needed. I think anyone that's been speaking with business owners in our area, uh, and I'm sure in many areas in Ontario, know that uh, this is the time of year when they really need to make their money. The new limits will allow up to 100 people to gather outdoors and up to 50 people indoors. I have communicated in writing to the um, businesses, the operators of the businesses that would require that all people within um, the portion of their premises that is public 
um, uh, require, require that they wear uh, a face covering or a mask. August is looking good. Uh, we've got the mask thing under control, we've got our patios are open, our restaurants are open, and uh, the most exciting thing is uh, this, the Winona will be sailing and the museum will be open, so you know, some of our biggest attractions. What will the seating plan look like? Will my kids need to wear a mask? What kinds of extra precautions are in place to protect my children and what restrictions am I looking at? These are some of the questions likely going through many parents' minds right now on top of everything else as they prepare to send their kids back to school in just a few weeks. It's been a bit of weighing sort of what's been going on in the community and sort of in Ontario as a whole and just trying to figure out what's going to be in the kids' best interest. An outbreak of COVID-19 has hit one of Muskoka's long-term care homes for the first time in several months. The Pines long-term care home was shut down to visitors after a staff member's COVID test came back positive. Right now we're on the upward slope of the second wave. Thanksgiving is going to look and feel a little different. We won't be going to large gatherings with family and friends. We will be giving thanks in very small groups. Uh, it's important to note that long-term care home resident mortality is increasing. Uh, and as community spread uh, uh, continues, outbreaks will increase, and uh, as outbreaks increase, the risk of mortality in long-term care homes will continue to increase as well. I, I'm getting so tired of these anti-maskers, the world is fine, everyone just go out there. Yeah, it's okay for some people, if they're young, they, can, they, they, if they get it, God willing, they, they get through it. Again, how about their parents, how about their grandparents? Because we're at a critical stage, and I, I'm just, I'm at my brink to say enough. We are urging all Ontarians, no matter where you live, to only celebrate in person with the people you live with. Huntsville's shop owners are feeling a bit stressed with the idea of Muskoka being dragged into the red or control section of Ontario's framework. It's a, always a more challenging time anyway for small business and that's just going to make it really dire for so many businesses and our, our main street and the health of our whole community. Ontario will enter a province-wide shutdown starting at 12.01 a.m. on December 26. It's another hit. You know, we'll, uh, uh, you know, we'll be able to, to do okay with, the, you know, with takeout business. And like I said, you know, the support from the community has been really great. But, um, you know, every little bit counts right now. And even, even going from 10 patrons to zero is going gonna, is gonna to make a, you know, a difference for us. So 84 staff to date have either received or are booked to receive their vaccinations. Folks, there is no confusion here. It's very simple. Stay home. But it is still a bit of a struggle and having the kids home, you know, all day for school while trying to work from home is definitely a challenge. So anyway, I thought I could do something from a distance and uh, I decided to make some signs up and uh, walk the road on Aspen. Started on the road here on Caesars Lane and I got a positive response or smiles or what the heck is he doing? The difference between Simcoe and Muskoka is back in the spotlight as the province looks to lift the stay at home order for our health unit next Tuesday. Local officials and even community members have been vocally calling for a split between the two regions and how they're viewed in Ontario's framework due to the staggering difference in COVID cases. If you were to make that split, Probably you'd get more transmission happening in Muskoka as people would migrate there to take advantage of them being more open. Even in the summer when we could all agree that there were more people in Muskoka than we've ever seen before, like it was insane. The actual community transmission of Muskoka residents, it didn't happen. Muskoka is back in lockdown as our health unit officials are keeping a close eye on a variant of concern spread in our region. On Sunday, Dr. Charles Gardner expressed his reasons as to why he decided to advocate to the province to pull us into the gray zone. I've been very concerned about the UK variant here. In Huntsville, the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit has set up a clinic at the Active Living Center providing the vaccinations to target groups right now. Very motivated because I want to live. That's as simple as you get. Life and death. Well, big reasons that we all need to get the vaccine. And I feel so good about it. Almost excited. Like I just said before, like it's almost like Christmas. And it's just going to be helpful and it's on a roll now. <laughs> so that's, that's the perfect thing. It's like we're, we're all getting going now.